a praise this morning. Glory. Amen. I'd like you to grab a pen, your notebook, your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self this morning. Oh, glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise God. Power voices, I'm going to pray for you guys this morning. I just sent the Holy Ghost, spoke to me in my office to, to pray for all of you. So in a few minutes, I'm going to be, you know, ministering to you guys. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit, things are shifting and things are aligning with the timing of the spirit. Certain deposits of God is about to come from within you to the surface and to show. Yeah. Years of praying and years of Serving and years of expecting and believing. And the time is now. That time is now. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I'll be praying for you in a few minutes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. We've been examining being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit. And this morning I started laying some foundation on Bible interpretation to help you with keys that helps you to unlock the scriptures. Um, and we established the interpretation of the Bible using literal or figurative expressions. We saw contextual interpretation and usage of words in Bible interpretation. We also this morning looked at interpretation based on corroborative evidences or law of double mention. I will advise those of you that were not in the service to get the material. You will get the details of all of these I have said now. And in the first service, we stopped at that corroboration. I'd like to read a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue... Speak it not unto men, but unto God. For no man understanded him. If your Bible was mine, I will underline that. Because a lot of people think that when we speak in tongues, it should be human language. But in the doctrine of glossololia, which is tongues, he says, for no man understanded him. Meaning, this is not human language. No man understand it. How be it in the spirit? So speaking in tongues is speaking in the spirit. When you speak in tongues, you speak in the spirit. Please listen to me, I beg of you. Especially if you have been, if you have been wrongly taught about tongues and you have locked up your mind and made up your mind that you don't belong to those who speak in tongues, that speaking in tongues is just, is just something that you don't understand. If you are that kind of person, I'd like you to just be a bit generous. Just give me some attention and listen carefully. Whether on television, radio, or wherever, or in this building now. Look at it again in the doctrine. Look at that Corinthians where we're reading again. That same verse. For no man understand it. The hymn was added up, which is okay. Understanded him or understand it. How be it in the spirit. So tongues are spoken in the spirit. He speaketh mysteries. I'd like you to underline the word speaketh. For he that speaketh, speaketh, speaketh. Did you see the emphasis? For he that speaketh tongue speaketh in the spirit he speaketh three times in one verse. Emphatic mention. Meaning that you cannot speak in tongues with your mouth closed. Meaning you don't meditate tongues. Tongues ought to be spoken. Alright. No one understand it. Meaning it's not human language. Is the language of the spirit. So now, if you observe carefully, um, as we study, you will see a number of things in this service. Now, part of Bible interpretation, there's a law we call the law of si systematic explanation. The law of systematic explanation. And that is to examine a subject in the Bible in an organized and detailed manner. Everywhere it was explained, for example, 
the practice of tongues in the book of Acts will be properly examined in Corinthians chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14. That is where you have the doctrinal explanation of tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14. You know, the book of Acts is an eyewitness account. Cannot be used as a basis for Bible interpretation on any subject. It can be referred to, but must not be used to build doctrine. If you're going to understand the doctrine of tongues, it will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and chapter 14. That is where brother Paul took time to lay the framework for the explanation of speaking in tongues. There's another law in Bible interpretation. It's called the law of single mention. The law of single mention. When a text is mentioned only once in the entire Bible, one has to be careful with such text because you cannot take it as a doctrine. You cannot make a doctrine out of just one verse of scripture. For example, there is this verse. That's the only place such statements appeared in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 15.29 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 29. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? You will never see anywhere else in the Bible where the word baptized for the dead is used. This is the only verse in the entire 66 books. That means this is not a doctrine. This cannot be used to teach or to get believers to, as a practice. Because it's just single mention. Alright, so this verse does not have a corroboration in any other text of the books of the Bible. So therefore, you cannot establish a doctrine on it. Now, there is also the law of first mention. I just talked about the law of single mention. There is the law of first mention. In Bible study, the first time a word is used in the Bible gives a lead into how the author's in other books of the Bible used it. In this principle, you locate where it was first used, how it was first used in that instance, then it will help you in the study of scripture. There's another law called the law of grammatical interpretation. The law of grammatical interpretation. This refers to applying the original meaning of words in Bible interpretation. A grammatical understanding of text is also critical in properly explaining text of the Bible. For example, John chapter 3 verse 5, the use of the word and, A-N-D. In John 3 5, it says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. He didn't say be born of the water and of the spirit. No, born of water and of the spirit. So, the spirit is the personality which water symbolizes. So, the word and there cannot be a conjunction. The word and there will not be an explanation. That means born of water which is the spirit born of water so it's explanatory the use of and in that text of scripture born of water which is the spirit is the kai rule of bible interpretation kai is k-a-i kai kai or the t-k-s rule of bible interpretation using the word and of the spirit there's another word in the bible that you need to pay attention to is the word if I F if if another similar word the word if can be used as a condition or definitive as a condition or definitive in Bible teaching the word if conditional or definitive just like the word and okay the word if can only be understood by ex examining the context in which it is used for example Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Romans chapter 8 verse number 9. But you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, 
If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The phrase if seems to suggest that the spirit of God dwelling in the believer is conditional. However, a proper contextual of the context will clearly clarify this. Observe carefully that brother Paul stated, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. This statement is absolute. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So, the if so be will be definitive, not conditional. Alright? So, the verse can be better understood as, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, since the spirit of Christ. Since the spirit of Christ dwells in you. So his conclusion helps to clarify that verse. And if you observe the conclusion, now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. This is just an absolute. Okay, If any man does not have the spirit of Christ, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So the if will be sins. Are we in the building? That's very important in Bible interpretation. Another word you must take care of is the word all. A-L-L. -L, all in Bible study. It can be assumed that once the Bible says all, it means everything. Excluding nothing. The word all was translated from the Greek word pas, P-A-S, or pasa, P-A-S-S-A. -S -S -A. Let me slow down like the guy who requested that she slow down when I'm reading Greek words. P A S or P A S U S U A. <laughs> pasa. All right. Pass or pasa actually implies whole or every. It is used over 1078 times in the New Testament books of the Bible. And sometimes the phrase all things was translated from the word pass. Let's see a few examples. John 14, 26. John 14, 26. <clears throat> but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The phrase all things here in the Greek is pass. Now, it is important for you to note that when he says the Holy Ghost will teach all things, he does not mean the Holy Ghost will teach everything. So, the Holy Ghost will teach science, commerce, business, agriculture, eh? a soap opera, acting, choreography, stealing. He will teach everything now. Fighting. Kidnapping. That's not what he means. So again, when you see all, you must be very careful in Bible study. He, the word all there will be explained very clearly because brother Paul now zeroed in the all by saying, will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said. So the all that the Holy Ghost will teach will be restricted to all that Jesus said. It's not all ambiguous. It's all as it relates to the context of the discourse in question, which is bringing back to your understanding because the word remembrance in Bible teaching again is another word to take note of. The word remembrance doesn't mean memory. Remembrance means understanding. Just like Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me doesn't mean memorial service. It means do this with the understanding of me or when doing this, let it point you to my person because I am the reason for the feast. So he will bring back to your understanding or to your remembrance all things that I have said. Are we still in the building? Another scripture, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Philippians chapter 4 verse number 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things. Not the word all. 
It doesn't mean the believer can do everything. The pretext and the post-text explains what brother Paul was talking about. So let's go to the pretext. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 and 12, then we read 13. Now, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all these things. Which things? Abase, abound, suffer need, and have plenty. I can navigate my way both in lack and in supply through Christ. Is it clear here? So the context of that scripture explains the use of words like and, if, and all. Am I teaching good this morning? All right, so it's important to take note of that. Now, there is another principle of Bible interpretation is historical approach. Historical approach. In historical approach, when an event or a practice is spoken of by an author in a text, when a practice is spoken of by an author in a text of scripture, it is important in Bible study to examine the original text where the author quoted from. Because every time you read verses in the New Testament, they have their origin in the Old Testament. For example, Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. When the day of Pentecost. Pentecost was a feast celebrated by Jews. It was celebrated on the 50th day from the Passover. And can be seen historically in the book of Leviticus. So where did they get the day of Pentecost from? The guys over there, you guys are making too much noise. Two of you. You're not the preachers. I'm the preacher. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse number 15. Leviticus 23 verse 15 is a scripture where they got the word Pentecost from. And you shall count unto you from the marrow after the Sabbath. From the day that you brought the sheaf of the weave offering or wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the marrow after the seven Sabbath shall you number 50 days. And you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of two tent deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruit unto the Lord. Alright? So that is where the concept of Pentecost was gotten from the law of Moses. Which instituted a feast called 50. 10 days after Passover to celebrate in pointing to the promise of God to Israel. Look at another place where that word is used. Ex Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse number 16. Acts chapter 20, verse 16. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hasted. If it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of pentecost the day of pentecost if it's clear can i have a powerful amen now let's look at the bible use of the word tongues because a lot of people have issues with tongues when we say we speak in tongues they look at us funny and the reason is because they do not understand where this is coming from the old testament books of the bible the word tongues is translated from the hebrew word lashon l a S H O N Hebrew word Lashon Genesis 10 20 Genesis chapter 10 verse 20 let's see where the word is used Genesis 10 20 these are the sons of Ham after their families after their tongues that's the first place the word tongues appears in the Bible after their tongues 
in their countries and in their nations. This is the first mention of the word tongues. It was used to refer to languages. A mode of communication. Such that differentiated one nation from the other. See the use of the word tongues again in Isaiah 66, 18. Isaiah chapter 66 verse number 18. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory. Again, we see that word used referring to language. The word lashon, however, was used in literal terms to refer to the physical tongue with which speech is made. We made speech or we make speech from our tongue. Jeremiah 23, 31. Jeremiah 23, 31. It says, Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. That use their tongues and say, He saith. In the New Testament books of the Bible, where we have an emphasis of the use of the word, the first mention of the word gives us an inclination into what the scriptures teaches. Mark 16, 17. Mark chapter 16, verse number 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Is there a believer in the building? If there's a believer, can I hear you shout glory? And this sign shall follow believers in my name. Actually, the original says, this sign shall follow the believing one. In my name, put the scripture up again. You don't pay tax for that. In my name shall they cast out devils. They who believe shall speak with new tongues. Ibibio wouldn't be a new tongue. Ibo wouldn't be a new tongue. Hausa will not be a new tongue. Yoruba will not be a new tongue. Ethic will not be a new tongue. They shall speak with new. Not they shall speak with tongues. They shall speak with new. The active word there is new. Except you are not a believer. If you are a believer in Jesus, you speak in tongues. New tongues. A believer is one that has believed the gospel and as a result of believing, he is born of God. As a result of believing, he is born of God. He is born again. Or he has eternal life. The word tongues is translated from the Greek word glossa. Glossa. G-L-O-S-S-A. Glossa. Which appears to be a direct transliteration of the Hebrew word Lashon, Glossa. It's used in the New Testament Greek. The word tongues is also used literally to refer to the physical tongue as an organ of speech and figuratively to refer to languages. See that? So in the context of Jesus' use, Jesus referred to language, new tongues, new language. However, Observe that Jesus uses the word new, an adjective to qualify tongues. New tongues. The word new is translated from the Greek word kainos. Kainos. K-A-I-N-O-S. Kainos. Which refers to something recently made. Something recently made. Previously unheard of. Such has not existed before until now. So Jesus speaks of a new mode of speaking. A new language such as hadn't been spoken before. So Jesus say, refers here to new tongues as a sign. These signs shall follow those that believe or the believing ones. The word sign is translated from the Greek word semion, semion, 
S E M E I O N, which refers to an indication of something. Something that marks someone or something that marks someone out. A wonder or a miracle. A wonder or a miracle. So this was going to be different from regular languages that have been known and will mark out a group of people. Speaking in tongues marks us out as a new kind of humanity that never existed before. A new breed, a new race, a new species of being that the world has never seen before. Marked by a new language. New creation, new spirit, new tongues of the New Testament. Except you are not born of God. New tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. Who shall speak? They. Who are they? You. Say, I shall speak with new tongues. Now say, I speak with new tongues. Because I am a new creation. I have a new identity. The spirit of God is my nature. I thought I would hear a powerful amen. They shall speak with new tongues. Kainos. A language that has never been heard. Now Jesus has risen from the dead and in verse 11 of Mark 16. Mary Magdalena told Jesus' disciple that Christ had risen and appeared to her and they didn't believe her. They doubted her. He appeared in verse 12 to another two disciples who also told the other disciples. Yet, they did not believe. Then in verse 14, Jesus then appears to the eleven and upbraided them for their unbelief. The word upbraid is from the Greek word onaidaizo, onaidaizo, o n u i u i d e z o, onaidaizo, which means to revile or to find fault with. So he reviled them for unbelief, for the hardness of heart. The word hardness of heart is the Greek word sclerocardia. Sclerocardia. For those writing, sclero, S-K-L-E-R-O, cardia, K-A-R-D-I-A. Sclerocardia, which is derived from two words. Sclero, which means hard, tough, hardened, Cardia, which refers to the literal physical part of the heart that beats. The core. That is, they are hardened in their very core against the gospel. Jesus upbraided them for the hardness of their hearts. Then, in verse 15 of that mark, he now tell them, go into all the world. And you are Jeleon. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Announce the good news. So the believing ones are those who believe in the good news. What good news? Of the resurrection of Christ. Hallelujah. And this sign shall follow the believing ones. This sign shall follow the believing ones. Pay attention. So, there are two contacts of the Holy Ghost in the believer. In John chapter 3 verse 30 to 34. John 3, 30 to 34. Mm -mm. John 3, 30 to 34. He must increase but I must decrease. 31. 
He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he had seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man received his testimony. 33. He that had received his testimony has said to his seal that God is true. 34. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure. The word unto him there is not in the original. God giveth not the spirit by measure. When God gives you the spirit, he gives you the spirit. There is no Holy Spirit in portions. Once you believe, the whole Holy Spirit enters you. He gives you the spirit without measure. In Ezekiel 36, he said, I will take away from you the stony heart. I will put in you a heart of flesh. I will give you a new heart. And a new spirit. Then he says, my spirit. And he says, my spirit shall cause you to walk in my statues. That means when you got born again, God gave you his spirit, which becomes your nature. So you and God share the same nature, the same DNA. What is in God is in you because you are born of God. Are we in the building? You are born of God. Somebody say very loud, I'm born of God. What is in God is in you. What is in God is in you. So God gives the spirit without measure. Without what? Measure. In Acts chapter 1 verse 5, see the way Jesus said it to the, to the disciples. <clears throat> For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And what Jesus was saying is, the promise that Joel prophesied. Because there were two prophecies. Ezekiel, spirit within. Joel, spirit upon. Joel 2.28. I will pour out my spirit. The word pour out means empty out. I will empty out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy so there is a spirit within which is the nature and the spirit upon which is ministry that means the substance that gave birth to us is what launches us into ministry is the same spirit the same spirit that burns us again is the spirit that releases us into ministry you don't need an extra call Born again contains your calling. Once you are born again, you are called. So every believer is called to ministry. Because it's the same spirit. Spirit upon spirit within, same spirit. So spirit within to change your nature and make you a, a, a new creation. Then it now comes on you to make you serve the people of God. In the place of ministry. Teaching good? Yes, Every one of you carries ministry. Except you have not got a teacher of the word. Who will teach you. And teach out the ministry out of you. Because my job is to teach out ministry. I will teach you until the ministry inside you will come out. I am teaching ministry out of you. Do you understand what I am saying here? Whether you like it or not. Except you don't borrow me your ears. Even if your ears are as deaf as deaf. If you keep them where I am talking. My talk will penetrate it. And bring ministry out of you. Shatobaladaba. Say with me I am pregnant. With ministry. For the kingdom of God. I didn't hear a good amen. It's my responsibility to build doctrine into you and force ministry out of you. You don't have to see a vision. Just sit down with me. You don't have to hear a voice like thunder. Thunder international ministry. No, no, no. Just sit down. Let me teach you. 
ministry will come out of you naturally. Because what happens is when you have learned to a degree, you become restless. You too now want to teach somebody. The moment you start teaching somebody, you are in ministry. Because you are taking out of what you carry to give to somebody. You are taking from, you are taking of the spirit to share. Ministry is serving others with what you have. Am I teaching good here? Ministry is serving others what you have. That's what ministry is. And it is possible because you have the spirit within who now becomes the spirit upon. It's possible because you have the spirit within which now becomes the spirit upon. That's why brother, brother, the writer of Hebrews will indict the Hebrew Christians. He said, when the time when you ought to be teachers, so that means there's a level to which you will listen to teaching where you yourself ought to be a teacher. You won't listen to teachings forever before you teach. But you will listen to teachings forever so that you can teach. You didn't hear that. You will listen to teachings forever before you teach. But you will listen to teachings forever so you too can teach. You can never outgrow being taught. It's a lifetime school. I still get taught so I can teach you. And you too will have to keep listening to me so you too can teach others. The things you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same. Commit to faithful men. Only a faithful man in the ministry can receive from the ministry to teach others. If you see anybody in a church after being in a church like this for one year and he cannot explain scripture, he's an unfaithful member. One of the marks of a faithful member in a church is that what he is being taught in a short while, he himself is beginning to commit to others. Let me tell you the truth. If you find a man in a ministry like this that is graced roundabout, not having grace, he is living in dishonor. You cannot dishonor a ministry and partake of it. What you don't celebrate, you don't attract. What you become familiar with, you can never gain value from. No. It is virtue that determines value. Your worth will come from your sense of value. What you disrespect cannot bless you. Cannot. Even if you have 35 heads. Cannot bless you. If you like cry every day. As long as you are living in disrespect. Your cry is crocodile tears. You are just a manipulator. What you do not respect. Can never be a blessing to you. Ask Jesus. He went to his hometown. And could do nothing for them. Because they were in dishonor. Not because he couldn't bless them. But they lack the attitude to draw it. So the rebellious shall dwell in dry ground. You are in a place where grace is flowing but you are dry. Nothing is working. Everything is tight. Everything is stiff as if you are under a curse. It is a symptom of dishonor. If you stay in the ministry and you discover you are the only one suffering. Do an honor check. Do an honor check. Brother Paul said, I long to see you. That I may impart spiritual gifts. To the end that you may be established. What did Jesus say? Any house you enter. Where they do not honor you. Eh? Take your blessing and go. Leave them with dust. Take the blessing and leave what for them? Dust. The best you can get from a ministry you don't honor is dust. You will, you will carry the dust of that ministry and look dusty like a man that has been on a dry road all your life. You know, when you walk on a dry road, the dust will show on you. People will know you have suffered because there will be evidence of hard life. The rebellion shall dwell where? dry ground 
Dishonor is very costly. Honor will cost you nothing. It takes nothing from you to honor grace. When you honor, honor, honor will honor you. When you honor, honor, when you see honor, recognize honor. So you can be honored by honor. He said, I will put a new spirit within you. And that spirit will cause you to walk in my statues. That same spirit. So, the same spirit that gave birth to you as a child of God is the same spirit that comes upon you for ministry. The same spirit. It's not a new spirit. I will pour out my spirit. Ah, yadaha. And on the day of Pentecost, what happened? Bible says, and they were all filled. Acts chapter, chapter 2 verse 4, quickly. Acts chapter 2 verse 4, as I round up this service. Are you blessed? Acts 2 4. And they were some filled with the Holy Ghost. How many of them were filled? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what was the next thing? They began. The, 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 the sign of a spirit-filled life is speaking. When you are filled, you speak. Any believer that says, I have the spirit and is always quiet, it's a, it's a practical and principal suspect. You cannot have the spirit and be full of the spirit and be quiet. How is that possible? They were all filled and the resultant effect of being filled was that they began to speak. They began to speak in tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. And the people gathered because you can't be burning and people not gather. Anywhere you see a man burning and flames are coming out of him, people will gather to watch the man burn. When you carry the spirit, you are aflame. Everywhere you enter, there is flame burning all over your body. The devil sees the flame. Evil spirits know that that man is a flame walking. You become a ball of fire walking. You lay hands on the sick. Fire rests on them. Sickness disappears. Who am I talking to in the building? Say Lord. Say Lord. Say Lord. Say Lord. I steer myself up. I will pour out my spirit. Your sons and daughters. Ladies and women in this church. Don't let any stupid teaching keep your mouth quiet. No. He didn't say I will pour my spirit upon men. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. But the Bible says women should not talk in the church. But women can lead praise worship. But women can pray. But, so what, what is the difference? When the Bible says women should not speak in church, it's one verse. It's a verse that has the law of single mention. It does not form a doctrine. And if you go to the history of that verse, it is because of the character of the women in that church that Paul told them to keep quiet. Because he wanted to refer them to the authority of their husbands. Because they were living rebellious to their husbands. Case closed. And we don't have such women in this church. So there is no need to ask the women to keep quiet. Your sons and daughters, lift your right hand and shout, I am filled with the spirit. I prophesy. Steer up yourself. Steer up. Steer up. How long shall you look helpless, saith God? How long shall you look helpless, saith God? How long shall you allow the mundane intimidate you, saith God? You have all the power that created the universe on your inside. And it's time for you to rise and walk in the reality of that power, saith the Spirit of God. Whatsoever is born of God, Overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcome the world, even our 
Botala. 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 Zabato balato balato. Je gonomo shatala ba. Zeziza zabato bebe. No koroto sakayaba. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. It's not by might nor by power. It's not by might nor by power. It's by my spirit, say of the Lord. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Lift your two and shout, Holy Ghost. Jegoyana sotala. Jeborato bebe bebe. Reana so bele katana. If you can spray in tongues, begin to pray in tongues. Rato bele gado shakaya. Angobo sadayana ha ha. Egebo sheke. Lagroto sakaya daba. Lagaba, lagaba. Power voices come. It's your time now. Rako so beyana gagaga. Open your mouth, pray in tongues. Open your mouth, pray in tongues. If you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Just line up and lift your hands. Lago shekeman. Negoroto sekeda. 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 Open your mouth. Pray. Lakatoba. 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 I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. O shako boroto saka. Ondo sakaya. Eh. Engelama no hete. 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 Hage shata. Hage shata. Hage shata. Riva katobegea. That deposit, that deposit, steer it up, steer it up, steer up those riches, steer up those treasures, steer it up. All over the building, gallery, under, in the audience, open your mouth and steer up, steer up, steer up, steer up. Jikopa topa, motoroto seke, bota bata, bota, bota, bota. Take it. Brushaka Kranasa Kradaga. O Dado de Lede Bebe. O Dado Lede de Lede. Mosotana Gada. Mosatana Gada. Tayo Labata. Tayo Labata. Tayo Labata. Brasaka Tata. Tata Tata. Tata Tata. Tata. Anga Gaga. Anga Gaga. Anga Gaga. Mambra Tasaka. Mambra Tasaka. Mambra tasaka, mambra tasaka, mambra tasaka, mambra tasaka, mambra tasaka. Aya tatata, aya tatata, age bolotosaya, age bolotosaya, age bolotosaya, age bolotosaya. Aga, 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 aga. Lago sekele reba, babra tasaya. Geda, 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 geda. Geda, geda, age broto seke, 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 age broto seke. Je kototo, je kototo, je kototo, je kototo, je kototo. Anga tala, 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 anga it's your time, it's your time. Take it. Here, here, here. Take it. Take it. Agabato, Agabato. Engebo Sata. Engebo Sata. Take it. It's a Kabotasha. Bre Bre Tesaya. Bre Bre Tesaya. Stay it up. Agabo Shatana. Agabo Shatana. Agabo Shatana. Agabo Shatana. Agabo Shatana. Agabo Shatana. Agagagaga. 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 
Take it. Agaba Tata. 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 Agaba so tepe. Sope. 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 Angre tesa. Angre tesa. Jokoto. 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 Stay it up. Brota sakapato petete. Zimbro nahata. Zimbro. Zimbro. Egebayoda. 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 Mambrandaya dada. Mambrandaya dada. Mambrandaya dada. Mambrandaya dada. Take it. Take it. Mambra shotala. 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 Agesha. 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 Tagola gagaga. Gengrana sande. Gegrana sande, Gegrana sande, Ada da da da, 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 O Gabayata, O Gabayata, Engemo Satalaba, Mambrota Sakayada, Jukaladaba. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, Paula Bosakayada. Take Kabada, 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 Legabado, Dade, Sakatade, Lebro Sakata, Membra Togele, 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 Angebo Shata, Tata, 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 Membra zokele rebosh Babrayaga 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 Praise your father Praise your father Lift your right hands and begin to worship God Begin to praise God Lift your hands up Begin to worship God Begin to praise God Is there anybody I didn't lay hands on here Take it Zikuta pato Pato lobash, take it. Rika subatala ya. Riko tange ga ya doni ana no jenge ana kata ya. Le ano jakanto bale ana na no jenge anga tola. Ne ano jakanto ba de boroko tu zabende ga dondo luda kaya das, kaya das, kaya das, kaya das, kaya das, kaya das. Kayadas, 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 Bodandes, Kayadadadododos, Brenda Sotola Garada Sakaya, Brande, 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 Ododododododo, Mambra da Sakaya Daga, Ah, Ah. Ah, take it. Zipota Kande. Oh, Zapada da Dodo do Loto Bosa. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. These are the days you will operate supernatural and natural. There will be no efforts. You will operate the supernatural naturally. I didn't hear that. Amen, somebody. Hold the balatas. Hold the balatas. Hold balande gesk. Fresh, 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 fresh. 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 Payada. Muta balata. Muta batoba. 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 Legatondo. Zibadoga. Kaladoba. Rakota balea. Tasata. Tasata, 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 tasata. Jibrana to peleta. Ondo bosoka. Rika to toto le batota. Payota. Zibrana katomba. Zebra. Sikata, 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 sikata. Akote, ako, 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 ako. Bebere ketete, bebere ketete. 
Joka, Joka, bringa, bringa, kalota baba. Mebrato sakata, mebrato tolia na nangu ndadando lodobu shakaya. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Lift your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him this. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. Wave your hands. Wave your hands. Don't be tired. Wave those hands. Wave those hands. Tumors are disappearing. Diseases are vanishing. Wherever you're standing, does it? Does it? All over. It's moving all over the building. Hey, kabato beleta. Sicknesses vanish. Diseases disappear. In the name of Jesus. Now receive healing. Receive healing. Wave your hands and receive. Receive healing. Receive healing. Receive healing. Receive healing. Receive healing for your body. Receive favors. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Take it. Kayada. Kayada. Matando shakata. Higher. 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 Kebalo besakayada. Mando loto saka. Patala dabash. Mambra da saka. Papere ketota. Tayota. Take it. Debo shata. Lobro tasakila nabaha. Necrodosa. From this day, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, go and do the impossible. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So, 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 hang a sapatal gabados. Reco sopate, 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 jumbra nandros, jumbra nandros. Lord of Majesty,
changes from this moment changes at once you you will begin to see yourself operating with greater ease greater ease you will find life getting easier things of the spirit things of god will become a delight you will find yourself swimming in revelation knowledge the word of god becoming sweet to your soul Shakoladaba. thank you lord jesus I want to pray one more prayer before I let you sit down. Lift your right hands, everybody. And I want to hear your amens like thunder as I pray. In the name of Jesus. Everyone under the sound of my voice in this service, on television, on radio, on social media, in our campuses, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, manifest the glory of God. Manifest the power of God. Walk in the reality of your identity. In the name of Jesus, barriers are terminated, obstacles are terminated, holes of darkness are broken. Everything that resists you bows before you. In the name of Jesus, great grace is upon you. 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 Upon you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for grace and glory. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Can we celebrate what we have received this afternoon? Is that the way you celebrate from? Sights and sound. Sights and sound something to see something to hear something to see something to hear Clara! amen amen if you leave me i'll just continue like this till evening but we have asked the counselor now quickly. I want you to grab your offering. Let's honor Jesus. Let's give in faith. Let's give in honor. Let's give to acknowledge God's goodness. Let's give to acknowledge the wonderful works of God in our hearts. All over the building. All over the building. Thank you Lord Jesus. Those watching online on television. I'd like you to look at the banking details. In our campuses all over the world. It's time to give. Radio audience. Mr. Bush is going to read the banking details for you in a few minutes from now. Everybody else lift up your offerings. Father, we give in faith. We give with joy. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you. Thank you for the privilege of being found in you. Thank you for the privilege of working in our realities. As we give in faith this afternoon, our offerings are a sweet smell. Now I pray for everybody. Your needs are met according to his riches in glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your word and your spirit among us. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen.